but that's how you guys are going to fill the nails. Uh, that's how you're going to remove it, take it down, rebalance it, make it look good, get it ready again for the next few weeks. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to Nail School. All right, so I have a guest that's going to act like my model, Tracy Ryerson. <laughs> so Tracy's nails are grown out. You can see that she needs a fill. And I want to be able to show you basically how we're going to fill these with ease. I'm going to be using some clear fiber gel and just a little bit of glitter in the back. And um, it, the hardest process when you're going through the whole procedure is just kind of removing a little bit of the thickness off the back end and then preparing the natural nail so that it's going to make it easy for us just to push the product in to the back end. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is try to expose as much of the cuticle area as we possibly can. For those of you guys who joined us yesterday uh, during the shaping class, I appreciate you guys tuning in. It was quite awesome. Um, I feel that everybody who is starting their nail journey just remember, it's not going to be based on the amount of full sets you do. It really is going to be based on the fills, right? It's all about maintenance. So we want to try to get these back as much as we possibly can, right? And what I like to do uh, before I do any type of preparation towards the natural nail, I'm just going to run my safety bit, right? So... As you can see, she has a little bit of just a little bit of thickness. I'm not going to run it on top of the natural nail. I want to try to keep this over the enhancement the best I possibly can. You're going to submit the best I possibly can. You're going to notice, right? So I'm not, again, you'll notice when I'm doing this, let me just kind of reduce this. I'm not holding her hand like this and going side to side. What I'm doing is I'm using an overgrip position, right? So I'm blanketing, right, the top of her hand with my thumb towards this position. This allows me to get my pinky right here. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to run my electric file in one direction, and then I'm just going to follow. As you can see, I'm not going side to side. I'm coming this way right? I'm coming this way. I'm not going this way. I want to be able to use this, this point of the barrel, right? Zone three to zone one and work in one direction just to reduce a little bit of thickness. All right. So as you can see, right, the level of, th a level of thickness right here on the back end, right? The level of thickness, I'm trying to reduce that trying to taper this down, but we're not trying to create any type, right, of ledge. So I just need to get them thin enough, right, so that when I'm filling to the back end, it's gonna be very easy for me to be able to fill that product, all right? So you're going to notice, if you're looking at the side profile, you can see the gel is built up towards the back end. And what we want to be able to do, again, is work in one direction. So I'm, again, she has gel. I'm being very careful. You can see that I'm running this around the cuticle area and then using a light feathering motion. All right, let me go ahead and zoom out. A light feathering motion to be able to kind of feather the gel off of the nail, right? So as I'm going around, as I'm going around, I'm, use, I'm using a light feathering motion as I'm working. You're asking if I'm wearing the opal gel. She is, right? She has the, opal. the honey opal gel. Now, normally, I'm, when, I'm working with, when I'm working with gel, I'm always working with the dust extractor. And the only reason why I'm not doing that is because it's really loud. And when it's really, really loud, I have to shout while I'm working, but you're going to notice that as I am working around all the dust, like, and that's the best part about this, is that if I'm working with the dust extractor and I'm actually able to kind of feather away the thickness towards the cuticle area and get 
as much of it off as I possibly can, right? Everything is going to be right here. All right, so again, you wanna to try to reduce, let me take this off because I can't even hear myself talk, All right? For demonstration purposes, you guys are going to notice, right? Look at this, from this point of view, right? All that thickness, that, that thickness that I had, I took it down so that there's no shelf, zero shelf at all. Now, what we do have is we have some options. We're gonna go ahead and take this off, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then I'm going to use either, again, I like to use a, an Arbor Band. I have a brand new Arbor Band. I'm gonna run my electric file at 4,000 RPMs. And what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to run around that exposed uh, area and I'm gonna try to get in tight so that you guys can see. So you can see, even with the overgrip position, I'm able to turn her hand to the side and just nice and gentle, what I wanna be able to do is lightly feather away all that shine, right? Just like that, all around that back end. So you can see, even if I'm running this on my own skin, nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. Look at this. There's no, there's no sharp edge. Nothing can happen, right? The nice thing about this is you're working with a three-dimensional surface. It's a lot better than working with a really, really sharp edge, right? Number of sanding bands. This is a medium grit. Right, so we wanna be gentle. I want to just lightly touch. I don't need to put pressure. All we're doing is removing shine around that area, right? And then creating a little bit of texture so the gel is going to be able to float into that surface. You can see all of it, like those little tight areas that we have right here. All I'm doing is trying to get as tight as I possibly can to remove shine around that. But you see from the side profile, again, we have zero ledge. Really, really, really slow. You can see that I, my electric file is at 4,000 RPMs. I'm running it at a very, very gentle speed. At right, the speed that I'm actually working at, and I like to show this to a lot of the beginners out there, if I'm running this on the inside of my wrist, right, there's, there's zero pressure. Right? I'm, I wanna tickle away the shine around the surface of the nail. Now, here's the thing. If you notice like some areas that are hard to get into, or there's a little bit of maybe, um, what do you call it? Like protein. just protein growth. And you could either use a, a tight round diamond bit, or you can even use this one right here. You can see, oh, that's not the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Let me grab these bits right here, boom. There we go, that one right there, right? The tapered, right? That little slight tapered one. These are great for doing preparation around the perimeter of the nail. You're gonna be able to get into those tight spots. Uh, for all of you guys out there, again, that are learning how to do this, remember your electric files, the import most important tool in your arsenal. So what we wanna be able to do, it, again, is just gently run. I'm running up against the back and just kind of tickling away all that shine. Again, you don't need to put pressure. You're just barely touching, just barely touching, running it around that back end, cleaning it all up. What bit did you use before the sanding band? So before I used the sanding band, I used my safety bit. And the reason why I use that safety bit was to take down all the thickness, right? So you can see right here, this area right inside here is a little bit of a, a ledge. So I can show you what we can do just to give you guys an idea. We don't wanna use the sanding band to remove that excess. If I was to put the safety bit, which is bald, Again, you're going to notice even around 10,000 RP, if I was running this on my own fingers, look at this, nothing is going to happen. So again, since she has gel, I don't wanna run this, I don't wanna run the barrel right there. I wanna run it right on top of the gel. And what I'm going to do is use a light feathering motion. Look at this, see that? See how it just flicks away? 
So a light feathering motion is going to do the trick. I don't need to be aggressive, just gentle, gentle, light flicking. If there is a tight spot where you cannot reach with the thickness, then what I recommend doing is switching out again, once it's thin enough to the barrel that you need. What speed were you using for that one? So that speed, I was running my barrel around 8,000 RPMs. All right, so I've got it thin enough. Now what I can do is I could just like literally come in here and just kind of tickle away, look at that, and it's cleaned up. So like this is going to be good for you to kind of just get in those little tight spots to be able to clean that area up. It is Tracy. It is Tracy. And, you know, again, what we want to be able to do is to show you the technique involved. So like going back to the beginning, let me show you guys. What I did was I used this barrel first, right? So Tracy has a little bit of thickness, and I'll show you guys right here, right? Slight thickness. I, I kind of took these down, but she has a little bit of that opal gel on the back end. If I'm running my electric file around 10,000 RPMs, I'm not gonna run it back here. I wanna run it right here, right? So again, oops, that's in reverse, sorry, forward. So look at this, look at this, light. And you can see I'm using, look at the gel flick away, just barely touching. All I'm doing is barely touching. I, I wanna lightly feather away some of that color Right, so that I have a really, really smooth surface to be able to work with. Right, so even on the opposite side, as she has a little bit of color, you can see it goes all the way to the back end. Barely touch, barely touch. What does reverse do on the electric file? So someone just asked, what does reverse do? You'll notice that if I come to my e-file and I shut this off, and then I put it in reverse, right? And then it goes the opposite way. If you're left-handed, if you're a lefty, then you're able to work in this direction. This is for lefty. So I, I, again, I don't, have, I don't have good coordination with my left hand, but you can see as I'm pulling in one direction with my left hand, reverse is going to be for left-handed users. How high RPMs does our electric file go? Uh, electric file goes all the way to 30,000 RPMs, but that's, that's unnecessary. The fastest you will ever need to run your electric file literally is between 15 and 17,000 RPMs, like right around there's the sweet spot for max speed. But a lot of times when I'm reducing thickness, I'm like right here, 11, 12,000. So 11, 12,000 RPMs, is going to be, again, fast enough for me, right? Look at this. So I'm using, again, a light feathering flicking motion, right? Light feathering flicking motion. And even the thickness that I have, like as you can see coming through this area, I'm not gonna run my barrel like this. I'm gonna run my barrel in this direction towards myself, right? All the way through to reduce thickness on that side. Okay, so whatever exposed natural nail that she has, you're going to notice from the side, right? Because the gel, when it grew out, there was like a little bit of a lump, right? Because as it grows out, it tapers back in and you have that thickness. What I'm trying to do is get this as thin and flush to the natural nail as possible. And she has no lifting, right? There's a little bit of color that's on there, but that's gonna be really easy to mask with a little bit of gel and a little bit of glitter, right? It's because she doesn't want to change the design. She wants to be able to keep the design on her nails. So once I have it in that condition, then what I want to be able to do again is switch out to my Arbor Band. I like to use my Arbor Band first, and then you're going to notice that I'm going to run this all the way back to about 4,000, right? A very, very gentle speed. Again, the same type of speed I'm going to be using to tickle the underside of my wrist. There's no pressure. You can see as I'm running this even around my own, there is nothing. 
Do you do feathering motion from the start of removal or full set? Um, so that's a good question. Um, I do feathering as I get closer to the natural nail. So if she has a lot of thickness here on the front end and there's no natural nail on the front, I could run it at a really high speed and just put a ton of pressure on the front of the nail to reduce a lot of the thickness. And then even from the side, if I'm reducing thickness, I can use a lot of pressure as I get closer to the natural nail, that's when I start to use the feathering motion. Feathering motion is gonna be really, really important because for those of you guys that are learning to remove gel polish from the surface of the natural nail, this is what you have to do so that you don't touch it. You're trying to feather the product off. So you'll notice here, just you can see, right, the exposed natural nail. All I'm gonna do, just like run the barrel, just tickle. Like all I'm doing is running the barrel all the way around right? Just trying to feather away all that shine that we have built up. There's going to be maybe a little bit of flaking. Even at like 5,000 RPMs, I can just touch, 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 touch. I'm just touching. I don't need to be aggressive, right? When do you know your bits are dull? When do you know that your bits are dull? You'll notice your bits are dull that when you start to have to put a lot more pressure um, you'll notice it with acrylic far quicker than you will with gel. Your clients will start telling you that. Yeah, and, and or you'll, your clients will start feeling a little bit of warmth, the heat on the nails. Okay, so once this is removed, again, you can choose to use bits like this to get closer to the edges. If you notice there's protein growth, right, or you're trying to get basically closer to, right, again, the natural like skin. So like here on this side right here, like it's going to be very difficult for me to get a barrel like this thick all the way to the back end. But with something like this, I could get right up to that edge. I could run this all the way to the back, just kind of tickle out all that shine, even tight down her grooves. Right, this is going to be a great way for you to get deep inside and you're going to be able to remove all that shine from the surface. Right. So once that is done, then what we're going to do is use swipe. Right. And I'm just going to clean. You can see, right, look at this. I mean, that, that's the thing, like nice and clean. Right. All that is just gel product, but you can see from the side, there's no buildup. It's super thin. It's just the nails growing out. There's no lifting, nothing. It's super tight to the nail. Then as it dries out, you'll notice that it's perfectly ready for me to fill in with whatever existing product that you're going to choose to use. So let's just go ahead and clean out all these nails. Now, what I'm going to do when I'm filling, right? Before I fill, we have to make sure that we're putting protein bond, not just on the exposed, right, natural nail. I need to run this all the way through the enhancement as well. Okay, so I'm just, again, set this down, put a coat of protein bond all the way through. All right, again, notice when I am working, even applying product, you see how my hand is out, I have connection while I'm holding this. Really important for you to be able to balance that you have, again, control of the brush. Even from here, I have my finger out, I have my pinky, my ring finger, and what I'm going to be able to do is just run a little bit of protein bond to the exposed natural nail and through the whole entire body. <clears throat> uh, Which is better for shaping, the X cut or the safety bit? Uh, what is better for um, shaping? the X cut or the safety bit. So okay. it's all personal preference. I like to use the safety bit for everything that I do. Um, the X cut I like to use to cut in smile lines. Uh, but I like to, again, when I'm using a safety bit, right, I'm coming at an angle. So if I'm shaping, I'm putting pressure as I'm coming this way, and then I'm putting pressure at an angle as, as I'm coming up through that edge as well. <clears throat> okay, so once this is done, uh, let's go ahead and get some clear fiber gel. So I'm gonna use fiber gel out of a pot. Uh, my recommendation is to get yourself a wipe and then just again, 
right? A little bit of swipe. You could use this to clean the excess off of your brush. You're going to notice that when I do my fill, this is like really easy, right? So if I pick it up, look at this. If I pull down, right? You see I have it on one side of my brush and I just kind of tap it. I'm literally just gonna kind of pillow this, pillow. See, I'm kind of pillowing this pillow, pillow, pull through. So right here, I'm just pillowing this through, pilling, pillowing it through, pillowing it through, and then coming all the way down and through the nail, which can fill that back end completely clean. Now here's the thing, right? I'm not gonna, like, she has color on her nail, right? So if I was to fill that, you're going to see, like, obviously, you're going to see the grow out, right, of color that's on her nail. So what we can do, right, to kind of mask that is by using a little bit of glitter. And instead of pillowing, right, what I'm gonna do is just take a really, really shallow amount and then I'm just going to lightly brush it so that we have a tacky back end. That's all I wanna be able to do, a tacky back end just like this, again, really, really sh like light all the way through the nail so there's no volume that's built up. And then Tracy's gonna go inside and just set it inside the light real fast, just gonna freeze it. Let me get my Dr. Pepper out of the way, sorry. She's just gonna freeze it inside the light and then what we're going to do is instead of working on the wet gel, we're going to tack some of that glitter on the back end to mask it and then we can use the pillowing technique over the surface to kind of fill that whole area in. Come on out. Okay, I'm so. Having problems with lifting, what can I do differently? Okay, so Tracy just told me that you're having problems with lifting, what, you can, what can you do differently? So lifting occurs because of three variables. Lifting occurs because of improper preparation, um, lifting occurs because your application could be too dry, especially if you're working with acrylic um, or you're getting it on the skin um, and then application uh, and then your finishing process. If you're not filing it flush to the natural nail where there's zero ledges, it could lead to that. I won't know until I can actually see you work. Like if you send me you know, if you DM me basically samples of your finished work, um, I need to see what it looks like and then I can assess it from there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna touch, again, the glitter. I just need to, again, set this to the back, right? I don't need to go crazy. And, and then what we wanna be able to do once we actually set this down I, I, I'm not trying to, again, create volume. All I'm trying to do is kind of fill in a little bit of space towards the back end to kind of mask that. And then she could go back inside the light, right? So whatever's on that dispersion layer, the glitter will stick to the surface. Are there any in-person classes in LA? We have OWC, which is the one week course. So if you want us to help you take your nail game to the next level, get a hold of Ray Bracamontes here at home office and he can give you information on our one week course. All right, now, Tr Tracy's gonna come out. So you're going to notice that we have that kind of tucked in the back. As you can see from the side profile, everything is really, really thin. This is where I'm going to be able to take, again, a nice healthy amount right, on one side of my brush. And what I'm gonna do is right here to the front, I'm just going to, like you can see, I get in front of the gel and I'm pillowing it out, pillowing it out, pillowing it out as close, right, getting in front of the gel, pillow, 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 as close. And then like I do with acrylic, from the front, I just brush everything forward just br from the front end of the nail, I just brush everything forward. And then what you're going to notice is that we're able to fill that whole entire surface, right? So that when I actually get into filing this into shape, I'm not going to remove anything from the surface of the nail. Inside. The 
for nine months. The problem is, is I'm not good enough. Is that normal? Yeah. So Tracy said, uh, you've been doing nails for, you've been doing nails for nine months. Let me see. Let me get it in front of you. You've been doing, am I on, on the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. So the question was, you've been doing nails for nine months, nine months, and you said that you're not good enough. Is that normal? Um, yes, it's absolutely normal. Um, for the first five years of me doing nails, I struggled. <laughs> um, and so did everybody else because, again, I didn't have the right guidance. The advantage that you have is we do live in an iPhone and a smartphone society. Back in the day when I was actually doing nails, the only way that you could get education is you had to either go to a trade show, you either had to get a DVD or a VHS tape, right? Or you had to find someone who's going to be able to actually mentor you, um, which was very difficult. So when it actually comes to your growth, at nine months, um, don't be frustrated, embrace it. You have to be able to embrace the growth and, and the process that it actually takes to get better. Uh, the good news is that we do have all the answers for all the problems that you run into. This is what we do. We teach people how to do nails successfully, but the only way you're going to be able to do that is you have to continuously educate yourself, take classes, take our Zoom classes, try to get into OWC, um, if you are working as a do-it-yourselfer, um, again, I encourage that as well because hopefully the next process is for you to go to school, get your license. If you already have your license and you're just struggling with getting better and faster, you have to be able to get a hold of the right education so that we can help you get to that next level. All right, so what we're going to do. All right, you're going to notice again, even with this, let's just go ahead and go through the process a couple more times. I want to be able to, again, pick this up. And again, a very, very shallow amount, right? And what I'm going to be able to do is just, again, try to get in and just feather in a very, very, you can see how my brush is in front of the gel as I'm just gently pushing it as close to the cuticle area without touching, right? Trying to get myself, again, the product exposed to as much natural nail as I can. She's gonna go back basically inside the light. And then what we wanna be able to do with the glitter that I have is I wanna be able to just touch, again, right, the glitter on the surface of the tackiness of my brush and just kind of get it into place. I have to make sure that Tracy sets it inside the light for at least 30 seconds. That's gonna be the minimum. And then what we're going to do is use this to mask any type of growth. And then what we'll do is we'll use the gel to fill it in. The best part about doing gels, it's super easy to pillow into the back end. It's probably the easiest uh, technique when it comes to all enhancements. So you're going to notice again, I just need to touch. I don't need a lot of glitter here. And then what we want to be able to do is just lightly kind of feather in, right? You're going to notice, right, as I'm masking some of that growth, just a little bit more, don't need a lot. Boom, all the way through to try to expose. You can kind of drag some of that in. As you can see, we're trying to get, again, coverage. But once we actually have this pressed down and covered, like I'm not just going to start filling this with gel. We have to set this in the light. If you're looking at the side profile, you can see that we've got great coverage. I can move some of the glitter down into some of that area right there, right? Just trying to get as much full coverage as we possibly can inside the light. So Trace is gonna go back inside the light. Once she is back inside the light, I just need to expose it long enough where it basically does not move at all. How do I join online classes? Get a hold of Ray Bracamontes here at home office. You can call 1-800-777-9170. Yeah, so. How do you keep gel from moving in, uh, running? So how do you prevent gel from running? Well, you have to be able to lay down, again, a great foundation layer. But I'll show you right now what we're going to do. And you don't do every finger at a time. 
Um, another trick is when you're actually doing gel polish is actually applying a streak of gel down the center of each nail and then working that excess of what you put on the center of the nail from side to side. We'll do that with Tracy this week. Okay, so what you're going to notice, I'll show you how to prevent it from running here. We're going to pick up our gel. We're going to get ourselves a really, really nice amount. Again, on one side of the brush, I'm just going to lightly tap this off. You're going to notice where I'm going to set this. I'm not going to set it right here. I'm going to set this here and get in front and then push. See that? I'm literally pushing this to pillow, 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 pull. So I'm pillowing, pillowing, pillowing as close right to the back end and then pulling from the front. And then what you're going to notice is that as it levels down, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to create again a really great coverage. I'm touching the surface to make sure the fiber gel is going to move into perfection. We don't need to do anything else less than that. And then she's gonna go inside the light and we have to make sure that she cures this out for a full 60 seconds. Um, a lot of times when beginners are working with a gel, the problem is, is they try to work one finger at a time. So what they'll do is they'll try to build the whole entire body in one nail, then they go to the other hand. Then they try to build the whole body and go to the other finger, blah, 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 all the way through. By the time they're done doing the last finger, everything is run down towards the edge. If you're doing... At two fingers and then freezing it and then working on this two fingers and then rotating as you're working, chances are you're going to be able to freeze everything into place so that it doesn't run. Another trick is actually doing this. So if I have gel, watch this. If I actually set this to the center and I actually push this to the cuticle, push this to the cuticle, push this to the cuticle. Now take a look at my brush. I'm not going to the outside. I'm going to slide this and then pull down. I'm going to slide this and then pull down. So you're going to notice I built a really nice kind of pillow, right? And even if I had to, again, use a really light orange wood stick, right, just to kind of get that off, I'm able to maintain thickness around the perimeter of the nail without it getting all over the place. Another thing you could do is turn the finger upside down to kind of get it to swell towards the center. But if you actually use, if you actually use, right, your gels to create that foundation layer, um, you have to take a look at some of the videos. My recommendation for those of you guys that are struggling with all the problems you're having, running, getting away from you, you have to take the online class. Sign up for Synergy Gel uh, for success. It's really going to change everything in that way when you guys, again, are working with, and again, I don't care what it is. It could be fiber gel, it could be hard gel, all gels. I'm gonna help you guys get to the next level. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this out. Let's just go ahead and file these into shape. So once this is done, I have to make sure, right, that I'm removing, right, all the tacky, tackiness through the surface. There's not going to be much to file here. I mean, honestly, at this point, what you can do is create a little bit of texture around the surface by taking a brand new Arbor Band, and then again, around eight, 9,000 RPMs. What I wanna be able to do is just lightly run it, again, just lightly run it around and then lightly kind of feather all of the shine. All, right, all I wanna do is touch, 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 feather this out to make sure that it's clean, all right? Do the same thing on the opposite side. Right, don't have to be super aggressive. All I want to be able to do is remove right some of that unevenness. I'm using my electric file just in my arbor band to create a little bit of texture so that the, the finished shell is going to bond extremely well. It's nice and smooth, ready to go. And then just remember when you're using any one of the top coats. Let me see if I have something here. I had a split in the nail from an old accident and the acrylic got my nails swollen and itchy. 
Um, I would recommend, so here's the thing. If you have, again, split nails, I wouldn't recommend putting acrylic on the split nail. You should have used fiber gel. You need something that's going to be able to seal it. Um, try to remove, did you go to a salon and get it done? Um, if you went to a salon and got it done, then what you need to be able to do is you have to get that um, acrylic off um, and then all you need to do is rehabilitate that split nail with maybe like a, a few coats of fiber gel. Also, it's important if, if it's itchy and swollen to maybe talk to your healthcare provider. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna notice when I'm doing finish, what I like to do to prevent it from running all over the place, I'll go through right, especially because it's cold inside here. And I'll just run a nice even amount down the center of the nails. I'll go through all the fingers like this. And then what I like to do is I'll get the excess off of my brush. And then whatever is down the center, I'll use this to work nice and even from cuticle to free edge, right? Boom, just like that, all the way through. And then that is going to be a nice even amount. I still I have plenty of product down the center of the nail. This is going to eliminate you, again, worrying about over applying the top gels over the surface, right? But that's how you guys are going to fill the nails. Uh, that's how you're going to remove it, take it down, rebalance it, make it look good, get it ready again for the next few weeks. Inside the light, cure that out for the next minute, ready to rock and roll. All right. If you guys have any questions, again, feel free to DM us. Let us know. If you need to get a hold of, if you need to get a hold of us, again, the best thing to do, I'll just write it at Ray Braca M O N T E S T E S at Ray Braca Montes right here. Or you can call 1-800-777-9170, right? Give us a call. Let us know how we can get you guys hooked up for those next classes. For those of you guys, that again, that are embarking in your nail journey, we're really excited for you. For those of you guys out there that are crushing it already, I'm fired up for you. Keep crushing. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys for tuning in to Nail School. Love you guys. Bye.